This is the story of Equity Bank. That five years ago, Equity Bank began its operations. In 10 years, it was declared technically insolvent. Then, Dr. James Mwangi turned it around. Let's hear the amazing story of Equity Bank. How from number 66 out of 66 financial institutions, he was able to turn it around to become number one, the largest bank in East and Central Africa. Equity Bank started about 35 uh, years ago. After 10 years, it was declared uh, technically insolvent and was condemned uh, for closure. It was number 66 out of 66 financial institutions in Kenya, and uh, it had distinguished itself by having accumulated the highest losses of that period. It had started with a capital base of one million Kenya shillings, but it had accumulated losses of 33 million shillings, technical insolvent to 32. Uh, um, the funny thing, the total assets were only 22 million. So how they balanced the books, I didn't know. Uh, so that's where the story starts. Uh, and essentially, this was the era of microcredit. That's when everybody was pushing Grameen, Brack, and, and all the others we knew. And equity made one just a simple differentiation uh, from microcredit. It chose to be a microfinance institution, offering the whole ledge of financial savings, payments, processing, uh, savings, insurance, and all, all the rest, such that realization that the poor people need the whole set of financial pro tools, not just uh, one tool. That gave us um, a significant uh, opportunity of differentiation and to become a one-stop shop for financial services uh, for the poor. The second aspect was recognition that uh, by that time, only 4% of Kenyans had bank accounts. And so banks were not in the marketplace. They were niche players. The market was 96%. And then they were niche players at 4%. So equity chose not to compete with the, uh, with the banks, but chose to compete uh, with uh, who was providing financial services to those who were excluded. Research reflected that people were keeping their money under the mattress. And so our competitor's analysis was not about banks or financial institutions, it was about the mattress. And suddenly, we realized why the mattress was more competitive than the banks. It was not charging fees. <laughs> that was one of the things. It had no minimum balance. It was accepting whatever uh, a person had. Uh, the third one uh, was that uh, it was availing liquidity while needed, but banks were restricting uh, withdrawal on two aspects, frequency and amount. If you wanted more than uh, a certain amount, you had to give seven days' notice, and you could only access your money uh, once. Uh, so these are the tools that we did. So in our model of banking, we removed minimum balance. We said you open an account even when you don't have anything, if you have an expectation or a dream of ever getting something, we'll give you an account. The second thing, you could withdraw the maximum you had, but we could also offer you, in case you came and you, you found your money had not come to the bank or had not been credited, we could allow you a little bit of credit to be able to travel back home. So minimum balance went to negative, build on trust. The, second, the third thing, we removed the ledger fee because poor people could not understand how they keep their money in the bank and somebody keeps on withdrawing through ledger fee and studying orders as we all knew them. So we abolished all that and then we removed the frequency. We allowed people to withdraw as many times as they could and limitation of how much you could withdraw. So that was literally uh, changing the model of the bank. But more importantly was we changed uh, equity from a commercial mindset uh, to a social our movement mindset, and that was more on the corporate philosophies. We created uh, uh, that the bank's essence, our purpose, was socioeconomic transformation, it was not uh, bottom line, it was not balance sheet, it was not profit, and essentially this became the cycle of the staff, that they were not being measured uh, by how much money they made, uh, it was how many lives they helped to transform, 
how many tools they availed to the population to use as tools for socio-economic transformation, and how much they brought champions. And that is why my first cause was to appeal to you to become also champions of this. Uh, and of course, the, vi uh, the vision was modern financial services. The poor deserve uh, quality above all. It's not just uh, the products, but quality. And of course, then we had uh, to provide uh, one distinction from banks. We had to listen. 